Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode. It's a really special one because I've got a guest that I think you will really uh, love hearing uh, talk about one of the most interesting topics on the table, artificial intelligence, and where we stand with AI today. And so to do that, let me, without further ado, just uh, introduce you to Yuav Shoham. Yuav, welcome, and thank you for joining. Oh, what a pleasure. And Yuav, if you haven't already come across him or know him, is uh, one of the most respected leaders in artificial intelligence. And I say that with some level of specificity because only in October, he was awarded by IPCAI the Excellence Award in Artificial Intelligence, one of the most prestigious awards that exist today. And, and Yoav, congratulations and, and uh, great to see. Um, for those of you that know him a little more than that, Yuav is a professor emeritus at the, uh, for computer science at Stanford University here in Palo Alto, California. He's actually in Israel today, so that's uh, where he's joining us from. Thank you again for doing this at this time. Um, Yuav's obviously got many things up his sleeves. He's previously been a founder of a few startups, two of them in computer science that were sold to Google, so he's obviously been part of that ecosystem for a while. He's a, a voracious reader, he's a large contributor to AI initiatives, and he's also the co-founder of a company that we spent some time on together, Yoav and I, which is AI21 Labs, and it's actually addressing one of the uh, more pressing problems with a technology that is increasingly more mature by the day, and that's natural language understanding and applying it to business problems. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but before we get started, I wanna to turn to Yoav, to you, and uh, maybe just to get you started, ask you about yourself. And what I might ask is, you know, if I were a friend of yours, um, how would I think of you? Who are, who's Yoav? Give us a couple of thoughts on that. Yeah, tell us how people think of you. Tell us a couple of books that you might recommend to us, and then we'll get going. Well, that happens to be one of my favorite topics. Happy to speak about it. Um, how would people describe me? I'm not sure. Um, you know, some of them in not very favorable terms, but they're more, uh, in the more gracious moment, they might say I'm curious, I think. Uh, books, I don't know. Uh, for example, last uh, when my last uh, previous company was uh, was sold, each of the founders uh, selected a book to give to the employees, and I uh, asked Ben Horowitz to uh, for copies of uh, well, I bought copy, copies of his uh, wonderful book, uh, uh, the hard things about uh, hard things, and he graciously signed it for the employees. So that's one book I uh, really enjoyed. It's a fantastic book. I, I've uh, enjoyed the book as well. There's so much that's talked about all the fun stuff that happens and all the good stuff that happens in Silicon Valley. R rarely do you come across a book on, on deep learnings from, from challenges and problems. It's actually a great one. Thank you for sharing that. By the way, one of the things I have to do is one day I'm going to publish a list of all the book suggestions that have come through in these seminars. It's just a fantastic list. Okay, now you are, we know you. And I want to actually, and I know you very well, so I'm going to actually now change the topic a little bit. Um, I want to go into something that I know is top of mind for you, and it's an area that I'm very passionate about as well, and it's this notion of an AI index, and it's something that captures where we are with the rollout of, roll of AI in the world. I'll stop there. I want you to tell me what it is. So about three years ago, um, uh, this happened under the auspices of a project uh, at Stanford called AI 100. Um, I had the idea that one wanted uh, to track ongoing goings on in AI on an ongoing basis. Um, it's too important a topic not to ground the conversation in actual data. And, and so we started this and it grew to a big project of its own. It's now housed at Stanford's uh, Human Centered AI initiative, but it involves many people from many institutions really globally. And um, the mission is really very simple to ground the conversation in data so we can inform uh, both practitioners, industry leaders, um, policy makers, funders, and the general public journalists about AI. Uh, our main product has been annual reports. We, uh, the 2019 report, the very recent one, um, uh, has really uh, tripled in size relative to the already very voluminous uh, uh, 2018 edition. There's a ton of data, and we can speak a little bit about a, a little bit about it. Um, and um, you know, the data is so large that, uh, in fact, we've we've created additional tools for people to help see forests for the trees. Maybe the most important one to mention uh, is what we call the AI Global Vibrancy Index, where you can look at countries. 
and compare them along various axes which you can weight as you wish. We, we consciously didn't want to come up with single ranking. It's very tempting to do that, which is very distorted. And we think it's premature. But you can go and look at the axes that are important for you, whether it's in the level of education or the funding, the economy, the social activities, uh, and then look at both a cross-country comparison or uh, drill down into individual countries. Look, uh, it's such an important topic, grounding the conversation of AI. It's just, there's so much discussion. There's frankly so much hype that actual data and a real life understanding of where things are is going to be so important for us. We look forward to that. Tell us, um, you are where to get more information on this. Is this as simple as AIindex.org or how do I get more? Uh, it doesn't get any more complicated than that. Exactly right. So AIindex.org will sure be... Um, We'll be sure to go look that up uh, if you want to learn out more. And Yoav, thank you for everything you do in the in the context of AI in the in the world. Um, I remember one of the first conversations I had with you was in Tel Aviv, and at the time you were telling me about some of the work that's going on at, in the startup nation around getting uh, more and more people involved in computer science. Um, and it just came to mind. If you want to spend a minute on that, I know our viewers would appreciate hearing a little bit about that as well. Well, that's, uh, again, uh, each of these uh, can be a whole conversation, but there is an initiative which we call the WeCode. Uh, and um, it's uh, a new model of training of software engineers um, that is a hybrid academic uh, vocational training, uh, sort of uh, a core computer science courses uh, coupled with a, a very intense boot camp. And, within a, and these are people who don't have the opportunity to go to uh, university, certainly not a quality university, and here they get really s stellar basic computer science fundamentals and then very practical, uh, high, high quality uh, uh, practical training. And I have to say, you know, it's still early on. We've had only two cohorts, but so far it's been a huge success with placement rates of essentially 100 percent. And um, so yeah, we're hoping to make this, uh, you know, model generally available. We think in general, in the modern day, the role of the uh, university has is changing. Uh, it doesn't become any less important, but it's uh, it's uh, it, it's standard value proposition uh, needs to be adapted. And it's again long conversation, but very exciting. It is a much longer conversation to be had one day, I think, with hopefully the same uh, viewership as today's. But, you know, it's so inspiring to see. I mean, many of us come on and we're all helping clients deploy and use and apply AI in many different specific ways. But rarely do we get a chance enough um, to spend time on how do we progress AI collectively? How do we get more people involved and benefit from it um, as a society? And how do we actually record the data and be able to use that in a constructive fashion? So thank you for everything you do there. You know, I know we have time with you today. I'd like to use a little bit of it. Let's go ahead. And actually, excuse me for interrupting, but on this topic, you know, the, the, the uh, AI index data really spans. You, you can look globally and see that indeed US and China, uh, you know, are quite dominant, but it's a, it's a character you think that's all of that. And you can look at the, the price of compute that has dropped uh, from, well, I uh, you know, three hours down to, 88 seconds to train certain image classification, but you also see uh, the increasing emphasis on inclusivity uh, in AI. Various organizations that are putting a, you know, an emphasis on that. And so, yeah, I'm glad you brought it up. I think it's very important. Excellent. We'll look forward to more of that. Listen, I don't want to let you go without spending a few minutes just on artificial intelligence. Um, many of us have studied the topic, not as much as depth as you. I'd love to get your sort of um, view of the evolution of AI and where we are today as a result of that. I think it's interesting to uh, look at historical data. For example, going back to the index, you see that uh, today, of course, uh, conference participation is shooting through the roof with uh, in Europe's, I think this year, uh, over 13,000 uh, you know, attendees. But if you look at the graphs, you see that in the 1980s, there was a similar spike in attendance. Uh, big difference, though. The emphasis in the 80s was about knowledge representation, symbolic reasoning, expert systems, 
very little data and you know fairly few statistics. Today, it's the mirror image. There's almost no semantic, no knowledge representation. It's all about big data and statistics. And, um, and we're better for it in the sense that we can now do things we couldn't dream of doing you know, 15 years ago. So the few things we do excellently well, and these essentially all fall into the category of pattern recognition. Um, give me pixels, I'll find the cats. Give me structured customer data, I'll do some kind of good segmentation. Give me a time series, I'll do some financial projection. And that's hugely important, and there's no end of problems falling into that category. But then we do this quantum leap and extrapolate and thinking about intelligence assistance and, uh, and what have you, and there we fall off a cliff because the technology is not there yet. And uh, I think it's very instructive to look in, in fact at the area that I've been looking at, as you know, uh, the last couple of years of natural language and uh, huge advances and you have interesting big models uh, such as, you know, BERT and T5 on it, what have you, um, able to nail various challenge data sets that are put forward, but uh, they're very, very fragile. Uh, so you can look at the data set and, and within months solve it away, reaching new level of performance, but it's highly specialized to that data set. And if you look at a, uh, the common sense of a five-year-old, your son comes and his five-year-old says, Daddy, Danny hit me at school, so I hit him back, but the teacher only saw me hitting him. It's not fair. Every kid can understand it. By understanding it's a timeline and events and causal relations between them and people know certain things, some people don't know things and all that things that comes to us so naturally, none of that just emerges from the deep networks. And that is the big challenge today in AI. And you see that indeed in the natural language, those challenges that do call for these kind of reasoning, the performance there is not good. And that is the big challenge for AI today. Uh, it makes it very exciting times because there are various efforts now to try to merge the, these the symbolic reasoning into the deep network. Um, I think the next few years are gonna be very, very interesting. Wow, you know, uh, um... It's a fantastic tee up to a conversation I know we want to have, but we'll do it another day, which is, um, I think you've laid out really well the amount of progress we made in AI and yet where the opportunity and the challenges today exist. And I know that the company you've co-founded, AI21 Labs, is trying to solve for one part of that. Uh, we'll keep that conversation another day, but maybe this is a great teaser for the upcoming uh, discussion we'll have. You have, I can't thank you enough for joining us and our viewers today. Uh, turning back to my viewers, I'd say you are Shoham, um, entrepreneur, successful entrepreneur, um, including his new company, AI21 Labs, um, Stanford professor emeritus, uh, deeply passionate about the AI space. Um, I would say, uh, I, don't know, I, I, I would say a civilization servant in some ways, and some of the work you're doing for the industry, for society, for countries, for nations, for, for the community at large, and uh, very inspiring. Uh, I just want to say thank you for taking the time. I do want to come back and have you uh, talk to us a little bit about some of the work you're doing specifically. Um, anything else you, have, you want to add for our viewers before we sign off? No, I just want all those accolades. I want them in writing. I want to show them to my wife. <laughs> we'll, let, we'll do that one day. We'll, we'll have to get a, grab a glass of wine with, uh, with the families. You all, thank you again. All the best. And thank you, viewers, for joining. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.